Alright, so what we're going to do today is replace the control box fan that's in the bottom of this printer with our 24 volt 40 millimeter fan and we're going to use the little quick connectors. So before we dive into this, one thing I do want to mention is that this video is intended to be a general video on replacing your fan for your 3D printer. Depending on the model you have, the fan location and installation may vary, but at their core, they're going to be held in by screws. You're going to have two wires going to your fans, one being positive and one being negative. Now, if you're not sure which wire is positive or negative, you can do a quick test with a multimeter. Any cheap multimeter will do, so I'm going to switch over and show you guys how to verify polarity. So as you can see here, I've got my basic multimeter here, and yours will look a little different unless you happen to have the same exact model I have. You'll usually have a dial here with different little symbols on here. The V with the solid line and three dotted lines underneath it is going to be your DC voltage. So I'm going to set this to DC. On other meters, you might have different ranges like 200, 2000, and so on and so forth. That means you have a manual ranging multimeter. This is an auto range one, so it'll automatically change the scale that it's reading at. So on these two leads here, these are hooked up to my power supply and it's set at 12 volts. My red is positive, my black is negative. But let's imagine for a second that these are the wires that are going to your existing fan and they're not red and black. You're not sure what they are. Let's say this one's yellow and this one's really blue. To verify, you have the power on. If I probe these two here, you'll see that I'm getting 12 volts. Now, if I reverse them, let's say I'm not sure which is positive or negative, and I put this on here, you'll see now we have a negative value on our multimeter. So that tells me that the one my black probe is on is on my positive, and the one my red probe is on is on my negative. So to verify, I can switch back. And now I have my positive reading. Now refer to your manual for your multimeter, but typically you'll have three different plugs on here. These two are usually for measuring amperage up to a certain amp. You can see this one is a 10 amp max, but typically you want to have it plugged into the comm and then the volt ohm, etc. So, but again, refer to your specific multimeter on how to use it. So now let's get back to the regular video. So now you guys see how to use a multimeter. You can go ahead and verify the polarity before continuing. Now that we've gone over how to actually use the multimeter to verify your polarity, we're going to move into the video. This video is going to use the included quick connects that come with our fans. I've heard a lot of people saying that they don't like them, but if you're one of these people... Uh, people I know what they're doing don't use quick connects. I always solder my wires and tape them. If you want to solder your wires and tape them, go right ahead. It doesn't make a difference. We're just going over general installation here. If you don't like the quick connectors, go ahead and throw them in the garbage. My feelings will not be hurt. There are also some people that like to use the solderless connectors. Just be careful with where you buy them from because a lot of the ones on Amazon are Chinese knockoffs of the actual good quality ones that work correctly. And I've tested some of these solderless connectors. They basically look like heat shrink with a thing of solder in the middle. I've had very inconsistent results when using them. This is a Wano i3 Mini. This is actually an older machine. However, it doesn't have much print time on it. But as you can hear, the fan is making noise in the bottom. Hopefully you guys can hear it. So I'm just gonna shoot these quick videos when we do repairs on our machines because people said they'd be helpful. And you guys wanna see how we do repairs here at TH3D. So the first thing I wanna do is, I've already shut down the Raspberry Pi. So if you have a Pi, make sure you shut down the Pi first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the printer's power off. I'm going to disconnect the network cable here. So now we have the printer power disconnected, and if you have a Pi like I do, it was shut down before we powered this off, and the network cable is now disconnected. I like using these little precision screwdriver sets when I'm working on the printers. You can use your hex keys if you want. Now on this machine, since the spool is attached to the printer, you can either heat it up and unload it, or just take your side cutters, snip it, and then make sure you put the filament through the roll so it doesn't go and fly off. Now this machine is pretty easy to work on and this will be a similar process for other printers. The only thing that's going to vary is the process to get to the fan. The fan we're replacing on this machine is right here and the bearings are gone on it. They're just sleeve bearing fans 
This one, unfortunately, only has about a month and a half of use on it, and it's already rattling. So we're going to fix that, and hopefully the new fan we put in will last well over two years. On this particular machine, we've got eight screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and these need to come off to get to the fan. Now you can see this is free to move. And I've got the little two pin here. Now on your standard i3 mini, this cable will go right to your motherboard connection. Now I have these wired so they turn on with my hot end, so that's why they're wired differently. But it's gonna be the same procedure. So I'm going to take my side cutters here and clip this. I'm gonna leave a couple inches of wire here because we're going to use these to splice the new fan in. I'm just going to put the side cutters down the center here just to get a little slit between the two wires because these are kind of bonded together. Some fans are like this, some are not, but we want to have them part like this so we're able to get our crimp connectors out here. Now to get this fan off, this one in particular is two screws. Now whenever you're replacing a fan, you want to keep an eye on which direction it's mounted. Typically your fan will blow towards the supports here. You can see there's no supports on this side. So our airflow is into the enclosure here. On this particular unit, they actually have little washers here. I'm assuming this is to space it out so it doesn't ever rub on here. I'm going to make sure that we keep those there. Now, when you purchase a fan from us, you'll get it in a little package like this, and you'll have these two little connectors here. These are solderless crimp connectors. I'm gonna set these off to the side, and we have our fan. I'm just going to do the reverse now and mount this fan where the old one was. and don't over tighten the screws. You wanna just snug them up. And all we have left to do is connect these wires. Now, I do not need this much wire, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and trim these. And how these connectors work is you put your two wires into here, and then you squeeze this connector with a set of pliers and this crimps them together. And you just match the colors. So I'm putting red, the two red wires into one and the two black wires into the other. And if for some reason the wire doesn't like to go in all the way, just kind of rotate the wire as you're putting it in and it will work its way up. And you should see the wire enter the top of here. You want to get it all the way up because about halfway into here is where the actual crimp part is. So now I got both the wires in the connector here. I did take my needle nose pliers and kind of push this wire in, but now we're past the little crimp part here. All we have to do is, is take your pliers and squeeze this down and do it on both sides just to even it out. And the little orange piece should be flush now with the clear piece. And just give these a little tug. And if they stay in, you're good. And we'll repeat for the other side now. And that's it. We've got our fan spliced in. Now before I'm going to go ahead and cap this all up. I'm going to plug power back in, turn the switch on. Now, if this is a fan that's normally always on, it'll start spinning. However, on this printer, I have this wired so it doesn't start spinning until my hot is at temperature. So I'm just going to tell it to preheat. And once it hits 50C, I'll have this fan come on and this one, these are wired to the same output. And the reason I'm testing this before I close this up is for some reason, if these didn't make a good connection, and then I'll strip these, twist them together and tape them. But you can see the fan spinning. There's no clunking noise or anything. So that's it, we're all done. I'm just gonna button this up and we now have a new fan installed.